Let's bring in our Rise News Analyst, Mahmoud Jaga, who joins us now to take a look, really, at the issues. Mahmoud, thank you so much for being here. The fact that, you know, when it comes to strike action, when it comes to with uh, Nigerian lecturers, it's becoming unbecoming. Let's put it that way, because at the end of the day, all of us who schooled here in Nigeria have one story or another. And we thought that, you know, with the present day and time, we'd have seen it change. But now, these lecturers, they're threatening to go on strike. And amongst other things, the main thing they're hinging on is the fact that the education sector especially at the tertiary level is inadequately funded by the government your thoughts no sector uh, in Nigeria is adequately funded you see like uh, most Nigerians I'm also tired about all this as you strike you see you, you will lose track of what are the issues because today it is uh, an agreement has been signed it is not implemented it's earned academic uh, allowance it is how to share the and academic allowance between academics and non-academic staff of universities. And uh, it is terrible that almost throughout last year, ASU was on strike in the middle of the pandemic. And now that we are trying to recover lost ground from last year, the lecturers are still threatening. And sometimes when you listen to the Minister of Labor or to the long grammar by ASU, you can even tell uh, easily who is uh, telling the truth because <laughs> the issues are so jumbled up. But uh, if, as you said, it is a question of the tertiary education sector uh, is not well funded, uh, there is no sector in Nigeria that will stand up and say it is well uh, funded. And that is even disregarding the corruption that is a problem in every sector because no sector properly utilizes the resources allocated to it and you know with the respect to education we can also argue that funding and properly managing the primary and secondary sector is very important because if you don't do that uh, even if you pump money into the tertiary education sector probably it will be in vain because the students coming in are not uh, properly trained to cope as we actually see now so you can argue for the tertiary education sector, but we must not forget that also a lot of investment and proper management is still required at the lower levels of uh, education. Uh, Very well said. Uh, but the problem mm, here mm. is, you know, that of trust. Mm. And uh, it is not from ASU uh, to the government, mm. NADS to government, mm. Uh, there is a breakdown of confidentiality mm. and trust mm. here. How do we marry this to avoid, you know, the kind of uh, epileptic uh, situation we find in tertiary education mm. in Nigeria? You see, nobody is disputing that there are very serious problems in the tertiary education sector. But the problem with the academic staff union is that in the last 20 years, it has been on strike so many times. And unfortunately, that attitude has affected other sectors. I mean, I'm just seeing, I just saw you on the screen now speaking to a vice president of the resident doctor. They have also acquired that uh, very bad uh, habit of going on strike uh, almost every year, so much so that we lose track of the issue. They've, they've often uh, been going on strike too before. The yeah. minister before um, yeah. Ehanire. Uh, yeah. When he was uh, the, uh, the president of uh, resident doctors, and the yeah, he of, he led uh, the strike <laughs> under uh, the then General Buhari's like uh, regime. The the Mahmoud, let's look at this picture right now. In the past 21 uh, years, if you mm -hmm. cumulate all of the days that ASU have been on strike, it comes up to four years. Mm -hmm. These are days and years that Nigerian students are having to lose, and over 1.1, over 1.5 trillion been lost to it's education terrible. outside of the country but at the end of the day, it doesn't seem like we're getting any results and making any headway mm. you see asu should be careful you, see, you know in the last 20 years when so many middle and upper class parents in nigeria were sending their children not just to Europe and North America that to used Ghana. to be traditional, but now even to Ghana, to South Niger Africa, Republic, the Republic, Republic Niger Republic. And if you ask those parents, they will not tell you it is because of poor investment in the tertiary education sector or because they are not happy with the quality of uh, tertiary education in Nigeria. They will all say it is because of ASU, ASU strike. strike. Exactly. So ASU has become 
part, a very big part of the problem, at least from the point of view of public perception. They should worry about that. They should worry about that. There are other methods to use to put pressure in a democratic system instead of going on strike every time. Will partial privatization of federal uh, or public universities assuage this incessant strike action? Well, Would it help improve infrastructure and learning conditions in Nigerian universities? Well, uh, certainly now from observation, uh, the lecturers in the private universities do not go on strike. I think we can observe. And it is not because the private universities have more resources than the public universities. They don't. They are smaller. They are not uh, better uh, funded or anything. Probably they are better managed because uh, they are driven by some private sector inter entrepreneurs. So perhaps privatization, but at our current level of development, probably we cannot privatize. I mean, who will buy University of Lagos uh, <laughs> right now? <laughs> Pasha, Pasha, well, listen, Pasha, listen, like I said, yeah. you know, it's not uh, really fanning it out yeah, to what investors. Is but what is there is probably mm -hmm. increasing yeah. some of the fees here and there mm -hmm. so that better services can be provided, the universities can generate their own IGR. What we know right now mm -hmm. is that most investors who generate the IGR, the vice chancellors, they have convoys too, like uh, mm -hmm. executive government and mm -hmm. the rest. They behave, you know, like uh, heads of uh, government or head of state. You know, one of the quickest ways to raise money, government has maintained in the last 50 years the policy of no tuition fees for undergraduate mm -hmm. uh, studies, who are the largest body of students in the public uh, universities. But anybody who says now that he wants to introduce tuition fees for undergraduate students, uh, <laughs> It's another from the students now. Well, we do understand the, the situation of the economy at the end of the day, but if we keep having these incessant strikes where the students who even go to these universities don't mm. even get value for even the little paltry sum that they pay. But at the end of the day, the educational sector, what impact all of the strike actions and the fact that it's affecting our students and competing globally? It's affecting everything. You know, it has disorganized uh, NYSC. Uh, uh, even you now, as a parent, you don't even know which semester or which session a uh, student. If you see a student now, he says he's going back to school, you ask him, is it uh, 2021 or is it nobody? It's nothing even, the to whole thing is uh, scattered. No, 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 no. We have to re examine this business. Uh, of abs going absolutely. On State of emergency absolutely. was declared mm. on the educational sector, but here mm. we are. Yeah. Thanks so very much, uh, Malam Mahmoud Jaga, a rise uh, analyst there for, you know, shedding uh, some perspective.